Hey everyone, Austin here again with another Let's Play video. Today it's going to be Vector Man for the Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive. This is a uh, side-scrolling action platformer with run-and-gun elements and a uh, very, very solid Sega Genesis game. Fairly late release as well. Uh, if you've never played this one before, I definitely recommend checking it out. It is a uh, very fun game. It's very tight uh, from a gameplay perspective. It's a lot of fun, uh, but also it's very impressive. It's one like a lot of other 1995 Genesis releases like uh, Comic Zone, and uh, Adventures of Batman and Robin. Uh, it's got some very impressive uh, graphical effects going on, as you will see throughout this playthrough if you're not too familiar with it. Uh, but yeah, great game on the system. Does get a little repetitious towards the end, but overall it's still one I highly recommend playing, and probably one of my favorite games on the system, actually. It's just a great game. I always go through this game probably at least once a year, or once every other year. Uh, it's a game I do like to revisit uh, frequently enough. So, uh, for those of you guys, uh, you know, that are familiar with my channel, maybe getting a deja vu feeling. I have done a previous Let's Play of this game probably three or four years ago, uh, but that's back when I was recording everything in composite, and now that we've got an updated capture setup, I've been going through my old Let's Plays and trying to redo them. Uh, what's nice about going through my old Let's Plays and uh, tackling them for a second time on this channel is, you know, it gives me a chance to learn some new things about the games and whatnot. And one of the new things I learned in Vector Man is where these permanent health increase power-ups are. So one of my focuses on this Let's Play is going to be pointing out where some of those permanent upgrades are. I don't know where all of them are. There are five. I've managed to get four. We'll try to get the fifth one. I have an idea on where it is, um, but we should still be able to point out where, where several of them are. So if you're struggling with the game and you don't know where they are, hopefully that aspect of the playthrough will, will help you. Uh, there are also some, some fun, fun things you can do via cheat codes and whatnot. Uh, I don't cheat when I do these Let's Plays, so we're going to play through the game normally, but after the game is over, um, I'm going to try some of these cheat codes I've, I've seen on GameFAQs right now. Um, and there's also uh, a little sort of bonus game you can play at the very intro or the very beginning of the game at the Sega logo, which is really cool. I just found out uh, about that one today, right before doing this playthrough. So uh, stick around to the end, or if you just want to see that stuff, just skip to the end uh, and check those out. But yeah, that should be a fun uh, sort of post-Let's Play uh, little part. So... Yeah, we're going to go through the whole game. Uh, we should be able to beat it without too much trouble. I'm going to try to show you where some of the permanent health increases are, and then at the end, we will do some some little bonus things, trying out some random cheat codes and whatnot, and uh, demoing what happens here on the, the Sega logo. So, But with that, guys, before we uh, kick things off, as always, I'd like to give a big shout-out to my current Patreon backers, so they're going to flash by the screen. Thank you guys for your continued support. Anyone out there that's interested in supporting the show via places like Patreon, uh, links are in the description box as always. Also, thanks to uh, all the recent live streams, super chatters, and channel members. And so, with that, guys, uh, let's go ahead and just hit this start button. There is an options menu, which actually has difficulty settings and control settings and sound test and things like that. So, this does actually have some options, which is nice. So, we're going to go ahead and just sort of skip through this story. Nothing too special here, nothing too noteworthy. And uh, we're going to go ahead and just start off playing the game. Day one, Terror Port, which is level one. Uh, so, you press the B button here to fire, and Vector Man can also duck and shoot. He can also shoot in all eight directions, and one thing that's really nice about this game is that uh, he can uh, constantly run and shoot at the same time, so you don't have to just stop and shoot like you do in some other games. So Vector Man can have a really nice flow to it where you can just run and gun uh, your way through the game. Uh, these big guys right here, uh, they take quite a few hits to take out. What I like to do is just get right in front of them and just duck. So what they have a tendency of doing is just shooting straight forward and you can uh, you can just duck under their projectile. So let's just duck right here. And I actually got a little too close to that one and took a hit. So let's get over here again. And uh, kind of like uh, another Let's Play I just recently did, Disney's Aladdin. Um, you can actually end up uh, still hitting enemies just slightly off screen. Uh, so that'll actually uh, come in handy uh, over the course of this playthrough. These uh, sort of flying bug enemies, these are some of the most annoying enemies in the game. They have a tendency of appearing um, just right as you scroll a screen up, and they just land right on your head, and they're really irritating to deal with. One of the good things about them, though, is they do have a tendency of dropping health pickups pretty frequently. Uh, so if you ever see them, if you're lower on health, you can, you can try to uh, slice your way through them and uh, get some health back. Uh, so you'll notice that I just turned into this drill uh, form. 
Vector Man does turn into a variety of different forms. He can turn into a grenade. He can turn into this drill. The drill can uh, drill through uh, thin pieces of flooring. Uh, also, the bomb or the grenade will bust open cracked walls. Uh, Vector Man can also transfer into a car, sort of a, uh, a motorized vehicle style Vector Man, which can also smash through certain walls. Uh, he can turn into Jet Vector Man. I don't know what the actual term is for it, but he basically has a jetpack sort of deal going on, and uh, he can fly up vertically. Uh, he's also got a form where he, uh, where he will uh, get these helicopter uh, blades. And, uh, that one's actually used for falling down, and, uh, you'll actually end up falling down much slower than you normally will, which is kind of nice. So yeah, a bunch of different forms that Vector Man can, uh, can transform into, which is cool. Definitely adds uh, a good bit of variety in the game. That little, uh, red Vector Man-style, uh, power-up I, uh, or, or Vector Man-style, um, artistically power-up I got, uh, actually adds time. So we just added some time. If you run out of time, you do get a, uh, you do lose a life, and uh, you get sent back to a checkpoint. Uh, so this is actually where our first permanent health increase is. So this is right it right here. It's this big floating ball uh, with electrical properties to it. So uh, now we have uh, five blocks of health. And uh, the next one that we get, I think, is on stage four. So now we don't really have to pay attention to that uh, aspect of the game until stage four. So we're going to go ahead and just continue to just play and explore like we normally would. So one thing I wanted to talk about here on this level is that uh, if you duck on this, you can actually just shoot along uh, upwards at an angle uh, with the flooring. It's very, very useful for the enemies that are, uh, that are on that floor. Uh, so let's go ahead and kill this guy, come over here, and kill this one over here. So, you do get extra lives from points in this game. Uh, so score is actually pretty important here. Uh, you do get score multipliers and whatnot. We've actually gotten a couple already, uh, on this first level. And, uh, there are a couple of extra TVs down here as well. There's one right here. So this is- this actually leads us to our boss fight as well. But uh, you can get some health back there, and you can get uh, some extra points and whatnot. So you get extra points uh, tallied up at the end of the stage as well, uh, based on how many uh, of these photons you get. Photons are the little 10-point icons, the little glowing star-type icons that you can pick up. There's usually a hundred or two uh, in each level. So, you know, if you're a completionist, you, you know, you definitely want to explore around and try to find as many as you can. Uh, but they have the extra bonus of, of being points when you get them, but also giving you extra points at the end of each level. Uh, again, you get extra lives from points, and so points can actually be pretty important in this game. Uh, you also get a, uh, you're also tallied for how many TVs you find, or television sets that you find. And so you'll get extra points for those as well. So, it's good to try to get as many TVs as you can, so we got 17 out of 30, and 104 out of 200-something photons collected, so... And I think we might have actually gotten ourselves uh, an extra life there. So this is day two. Uh, a couple of the levels in this game uh, actually try to mix things up. So you're stuck to this train track here. And you can shoot left, right, or straight. And so what our, our focus here is, is just to shoot this guy's hand. And then try to shoot the objects that come down from the sides of the screen. They shoot projectiles at you. And uh, I try to jump over the projectiles. And we just took a hit, but not a big deal. So we completed the level, got 10,000 points. And then that's it. So we're on to day three already. So the first couple of days actually go by pretty quickly because, you know, that second level isn't very long. And uh, this third level here is not all that complex either. It's just a very simplistic level. A lot of levels have quite a bit of verticality to them. Uh, this level does not. Like, yeah, you can scroll the screen up just a little bit. Like, the top half of the playfield is, is up there. Bottom half is down here in the water. But that's it. So it's just a simple scroll left to right level. Uh, nothing too crazy here. Not much verticality at all. So there's not a lot you have to actually worry about on this level. But uh, we'll go ahead and try to get as many TVs as we can here. Usually there's uh, there are some TVs up top, up outside the water. And remember, when you play this game, you can shoot diagonally 
Uh, and you can shoot diagonally while you run. So, you know, lots of running and gunning going on uh, in this game. These guys right here, they, they have these, you know, they're turret-based enemies, and they have a tendency of shooting pretty much wherever you are in the screen. Um, you know, they don't shoot, like, directly below themselves, but they will shoot diagonally downwards. Uh, so if you try to get close to them, uh, they can be a little irritating to deal with. This right here, you can't actually go through unless you're, you, you know, you, you have the grenade form. So we will actually get a grenade in one of these TVs coming up here. Probably this one right here. There we go. And uh, now, these power-ups are timed, so if you don't get here in time, the grenade will explode and you won't actually end up getting uh, this secret area here, which probably houses another TV. Yep. And here's another form. This is a uh, sea creature form, or fish, or whatever you want to call it. Vector Man, uh, you know, moves very, very quickly with this form underwater, so... Pretty useful in this level. It's a way to, to get through the stage a little bit faster. So that, that uh, beeping sound that you're hearing means that my, uh, my weapon is about to uh, basically go away. Now one other thing you can do is you can also, with your double jump, you can actually damage enemies with it. So let's go ahead and bam, just jump on that guy. Just like so. So it's actually a pretty powerful attack, which is nice. Uh, I don't use it a lot to actually kill enemies with. A lot of enemies I prefer to just kill from a distance, and that was actually a checkpoint power-up. Uh, so, whenever you pick those up, that is where you checkpoint to. And let's go this way. Destroy this TV. And I did not see what that was. I like to try to be away from the TVs when I destroy them, so I can actually see what power-ups drop. Uh, otherwise, you end up grabbing the power-up before you even see what it is, so... Let's go ahead and destroy that one, and that is another fish transformation. And so with that, let's go ahead and just come this way. You can actually kill enemies in the fish form, but you, you sort of have to hit uh, the enemies with, like, the tip of your head. It's a little, little awkward, to be honest with you. And there's added time. Let's go ahead and grab that. Now, when you run out of time in this game, uh, you do uh, lose a life, and you'll get sent back to whatever your last checkpoint was. Uh, so if you're trying to lose, uh, you know, uh, the, the minimum amount of lives, or a minimal amount of lives, sorry, um, you know, keeping, keeping tabs on your time is very important. A lot of levels, um, almost don't really give you enough time to fully explore, or you need to fully explore to extend your time. Um, and so it's actually very easy to run out of time on quite a few stages in this game. So what we're going to do in this playthrough is probably not even try to explore that much uh, overall. Unless I'm comfortable with it already. But let's come down here, unleash that grenade, just like so. And fortunately that grenade actually hit that uh, turret enemy above water, which is nice. I can just come here and kill these guys pretty easily. These guys bounce all over the place, too. So they can actually, uh, sort of, like, curl back uh, low enough to where they actually duck under your shots. It's kind of interesting. And so this is a one-time use power-up uh, that basically acts as a screen-clearing bomb. You don't get them very often in the game, actually. The I find the purpose of them... Well, to be not all that useful, uh, just because you don't get them very often, so... You know, and what did I do with that one, that power-up? I killed one enemy with it, so it's like whoop de doo it's not really all that special. Uh, but it is there in the game, so it is something that you can get as you play through some of these levels. I'm trying to kill as many of these guys as possible. And it looks like we have a times two multiplier here, and that's actually kind of what I was talking about right there earlier. And I killed that guy off the screen, which was nice, but I also slammed right into him as I scrolled the screen up. And uh, you'll find that there's a lot of that in this game. There's another checkpoint. And we're gonna go ahead and come back just to try to get some of these photons, as well as kill some of these enemies. Oops, I took a hit. I didn't mean to do that. I just slammed right into him. Now, the other thing about taking unnecessary hits is you have to keep in mind... Ooh, see, there's another one. Uh, you have to keep in mind that um, your life carries over from level to level. So, if I beat this level with just one hit point left, uh, well, I only have one hit point starting off in the next stage. So, but look, we got a uh, 10x multiplier, which is nice. Let's go ahead and... Uh 
Ooh, see, that actually would be really good there if he kept doing that. There we go. Uh, one thing that's actually really cool about the multipliers, and this was actually a comment that was left on my previous Vector Man Let's Play, is that apparently multipliers also multiply the amount of health you get back. So that was actually really good. So we got the 10x multiplier and uh, picked up the health icon and got a ton of points from it. And actually, I didn't mean to exit just yet. There were a couple of uh, items I could have gotten. We still had a minute 16 to, uh, to finish the level, so... But so far, so good, guys. We have uh, six lives, 90,000 points, and five blocks of health. So absolute zero here is uh, the next level where we can get ourselves a uh, permanent health increase. Now, we actually have quite a bit of time uh, on this level, so we'll probably take our time here and try to get as many... Uh, Many, as many goodies as we possibly can. So let's actually come back down here this way. And get some of these. Just like that. Now one nice little feature in this game is that if you just drop off of a uh, platform, uh, you can actually still double jump. So I really like it when uh, games with double jump mechanics do that. So you don't have to jump to double jump. You just have to fall off a ledge and then you can you can do the double jump once, which is nice. Adds quite a bit of flexibility to how the jumping is handled in a game. Go ahead and grab these. And there's another fish power up right here. Now with the fish power up, you're invincible. And, uh, actually, I think you're probably invisible for most of the other power-ups where Vector Man actually changes his form. So one thing uh, I used to do when I played this game is, um, I would get the fish form on this level, and then I would just basically skip my way to the top of the stage just to get through it a little bit quicker. Which is fine if you're trying to rush the game or if you're trying to speedrun or something like that. But if you're trying to, you know, survive and get all the TVs and get all the power-ups that you can, um, you know, that doesn't really help you because then you miss out on potential uh, power-up opportunities. So this right here is actually what the, um, where the, you know, the same kind of area that uh, you're going to be going to later towards the top of this level to get a permanent health increase. So there's a, a blue wall that you can just walk through. And uh, let's go ahead and try to come up here this way. And I took a hit. Some of the hitboxes in this game can be pretty large. Like, that didn't actually look like I should have taken a hit. But that's just that's just how things go with this era of, of gaming. Hitboxes could be a little bit uh, fickle. For the most part, I'd say the hitboxes are actually decent in this game, but there are some enemies like these guys with these multiple uh, bubble tails, or tails that ha are made up of multiple bubbles. Uh, could be a little tricky to deal with when it comes to, uh, you know, the hitbox. And there we go, we got a bunch of photons from that TV. And uh, let's actually walk over this way, see what else, see what other goodies are this way. Times three multiplier, there we go, very good. More photons. And I could see that there was an enemy up top, so I intentionally uh, sort of sort of waited to do my baby jump when I like just barely um, well. So like I wanted to get it to where my baby jump or my <laughs> my baby jump. I wanted to get it to where my double jump would go high enough to where I would just barely hit the platform. So jump, now double jump. So if I double jump from here or I jump fully, I go way too high. Say like there's an enemy right above this platform right here. Um, what I want to do is like that, you know, that way I, uh, so kind of like this right here. So if that enemy was directly above on that platform, if I timed my double jump just right, I could land on the platform without taking a hit. I took way too long to ex to, to uh, explain that. <laughs> I am actually a little burned out today uh, doing this Let's Play, so for those of you guys that, that don't know, I, a lot of times I do Let's Plays in batches, or that's something I've been doing lately anyway, and... Uh, so I recorded three Let's Plays today. First Subterranea, then Aladdin, and now Vector Man. So I've already done multiple Let's Plays. I've talked for several hours uh, by this point. 
Uh, so, in doing this Vector Man Let's Play, I am uh, a little burnt out at the moment. Okay, so this uh, point to the left here, this is where we're going to get our next permanent health increase. Uh, but unfortunately, because I've been dilly dallying uh, and uh, ex you know, trying to explain things and whatnot, uh, we're actually sort of running low on time. So, let's go ahead and get this health increase, and there we go. Permanent health increase. And uh, we have to actually exit through the bottom here. And let's just try to work our way up here about as quickly as we can. Go ahead and get this TV while we're at it. And that's a five times multiplier. So we can get some good points with that. All right, and so now with the fish, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and just go straight up because I don't have much time left, and there might be a uh, you know time addition power up that we can get, and there's the rocket power up. This takes us straight to the boss fight, and that's the checkpoint. All right, so this is a flying boss, or I should say, the first form of the boss is flying. So what I like to do is just shoot him at an angle like this as he comes in and then just shoot him again as he goes the other way, like so. Nothing too special here. And this is basically my strategy for doing this without taking too many hits. We don't do a lot of damage, but at least we don't take any hits. You'll find that some of these bosses actually don't have that much HP. They're probably designed that way because a lot of them are set up in a manner where uh, you can only do a couple of hits at a time, like this guy against this guy right here. Please die. Okay. All right. This is the uh, the second phase. I have to actually kill this guy really, really quickly now um, because I'm running out of time. There we go. Good. And that's what I get for taking my, my sweet time going through that level and failing to explain things properly. Uh, we end up almost running out of time, but that's okay. That's fine. We didn't die. Uh, we got the permanent health increase. And uh, the next permanent health increase is going to be on uh, stage 6. we got some bugs here that'll knock us down. Uh, but what's cool about this level is I can actually show off where the first satellite is. And destroying the satellites is what takes you to bonus stages in the game. And there's a, our first checkpoint. So we're going to fall down here like so. So just like scrolling the screen up and just slamming into enemies, again, you can slam into enemies on the way down as well. Uh, which is exactly what happened. I fell down and there was a turret guy and he just shot straight at me. So, that's, uh, one of the things I'd say that hasn't aged that well with this game, design-wise, is there are a lot of cheap shots in this game. And it's just something you deal with, with, uh, this era of, uh, this gaming. There's a lot of that from this era. Um, and it can be irritating in Vector Man, but, you know, the thing about Vector Man also is that, like, look at that, my, those enemies, uh, dropped multiple blocks of health or multiple health refill pellets. So it's like, it's not the end of the world. It can be annoying, but you know, you just kind of live with it. It's just one of those things. All right, let's actually go, I think this way. There we go. Yeah, and that takes us to uh, basically a secret TV. And then we can double jump our way back out. Another health uh, refill right there. And there we go. Go up this way. All right, we can't actually go down, so we can actually come back this way and kill some more enemies down here. One other thing I actually learned recently... Oops, I didn't want to come up here just yet. We can't actually go back down. Uh, one of the things I learned recently playing this game is that... Um, invincibility frames are actually kind of interesting in this where if you're constantly taking damage or rubbing up against an enemy that constantly deals damage, and there's a secret right here as well, um, you won't actually take more damage. Your invincibility frames will keep resetting, uh, which is very interesting. 
I actually learned that against one of the bosses in this game. So, uh, if I take a hit against one of the bosses later on, I'll try to demonstrate that. I'll try to show it off so you can see what I'm talking about. So we're coming back down here again just to collect some of this stuff. Just like that. Alright, so I do need to speed things up a little bit. I don't know if I'm going to get a uh, time extension on this level. So let's go ahead and just sort of skip our way through here. I really like this water effect on uh, this level as well. It's very cool. There we go. That guy takes quite a few hits. And I missed that uh, secret TV, actually. All right, another drill. Just drill down here, like so. And that enemy that I just killed, he had... You could only see him for a couple of seconds, but... He had this mask on the front of him. Uh, he can only be killed... From the... From the back side. Okay, so that's our satellite. And so for this part, I need to kill this guy. Hit him in the tail. And then I need to get behind him. Like so, and just hit him from behind. And then we can just hit him from the front. There we go. I need to try to rush up this way as quickly as I can. And fall down here. Come into here. Destroy all these enemies. And this is going to be the generator for the satellite. And we destroy the satellite. And then bam. Level ends. This is how you get to the bonus stage. So the reason I was rushing to get to the bonus stage is because I was about to run out of time. Because I kept redoing some of the earlier parts of this level. And uh, this is uh, a bonus stage. It's very reminiscent of some, uh, you know, Golden Age era uh, video games. Uh, Cosmic Arc, I think, is one of them. There's also a uh, Atari arcade game. I think it was by Atari. Um, where you're just stuck in the middle of the screen. You shoot in all four directions, and that's pretty much it. Uh, so you just point in the direction that you want to shoot. And uh, this bonus stage basically just gives you points, but it's actually, it's still pretty cool. It's pretty cool to see. I actually didn't know about this bonus stage until uh, today, actually. In, you know, looking up some stuff online and doing practice sessions uh, of this game. And that's it. So once you lose all your health, uh, you basically go to the next level. So this is the Bamboo Mill, Stage 6. You've got seven lives on Stage 6. And at the end of this level is where you get uh, your next uh, permanent health increase. So I'll point that out once we get to it. There's actually a, a bit of a shortcut you can take to the boss fight, and I'll point that out once we get to that too. I'm not going to be too stingy about a lot of the photon pickups now because, you know, like I said, this game is a fairly decently length playthrough. We're only on stage 6. There are 15 or 16 stages in this game. Um, so, you know, as you can probably guess, uh, there are quite a few more... Uh, quite a few more stages to go, being only on stage 6 uh, at this moment. Now, two of the other stages in the game are uh, relatively short. I don't want to say bonus stages, because you can still die. But they are levels meant to, uh, you know, break up the monotony of, uh, of the rest of the game. Monotony is kind of a, kind of a strong word, but you know, the repetition of uh, the rest of the game. I don't mean to say that in a condescending manner. I mean, this game does get repetitive. Like I said, I think I said it. I don't know if it was on this take or any of the other ten takes I've tried on this Let's Play. Uh, but the game does get repetitious. It does kind of overstay its welcome. Um, you know, the game lasts for about an hour. I personally would have preferred it to last about 45 minutes. Uh, much longer than 45 minutes, or really any longer than that, for a game like this. That doesn't really mix up its gameplay. Uh, that often, like, the, the side-scrolling action platforming stages, um, don't get mixed up that much. It's a lot of the same stuff, just through and through. Some of the, uh, some of the same, uh, stage, uh, designs are even regurgitated and just palette-swapped. Um... 
uh, which which doesn't help. I think if uh, some of the stages uh, had brand new art assets, it might be a little bit different. But I mean, ultimately, I, the game doesn't get re repetitious because of you know palette swaps and things like that. It gets repetitious because of the gameplay, and uh, the you know they don't do enough with the gameplay. They don't do enough different with the gameplay throughout the the experience to to uh, make it not feel repetitive. But, you know, again, I'm not saying that in a condescending manner. The game is still fantastic and uh, still one of my favorites in the system. Now, I don't think I can actually get taken down here. Yeah, later on in the game, there are there's a similar mechanic, but you can actually go down below through platforms. Or actually, right here. It's not even later on in the game. It's right here on this level, too. So, um, but let's come back through here. And I feel like I'm... There, yeah, we have to fall down here. I was going to say, I feel like I'm doing something wrong here. And actually, I think I'm going backwards now. Okay, no, no, we're good. Alright, so we have just a little under two minutes to get to the boss. I don't know if we're going to have ourselves another time extend in this level. And there's a, another weapon. This is sort of a shield kind of weapon. It, um, a projectile basically rotates around you. And this is actually the shortcut I was talking about to the boss fight. So we can actually use our grenade right here, which busts open that wall. But we actually don't want to take this. We actually don't want to take this. Um, because in order to get the permanent health extend, we have to take the, the quote-unquote normal route to the boss. Hopefully that gives us enough time to actually, you know, beat and fight the boss. But it actually doesn't really matter that much. We can just end up losing a life in the process. Actually, I'm not going to go down there because, again, I don't know how much... I don't know if I'm going to be able to have enough time to actually fight the boss and beat him. So let's go ahead and rush over this way as much as we can. Alright, so it's this right here coming up. This is our last stretch of the boss fight. There's a TV and a checkpoint and another TV right here. This is where we get our permanent health increase. But there's also a TV down here, which gives us a spread shot for the boss fight. And there's our boss fight. Yeah, this is actually the boss that I discovered that uh, your invincibility frames just constantly reset as long as you're constantly taking damage. But it's difficult to actually, you know, take advantage of that and still do damage to the boss fight. Or still do damage to the boss itself. Running out of time. He's dead. Three, okay. Okay, good. So the time stops, like, right when you destroy the boss. That was very, very close. <laughs> so we still did that level without dying. Uh, and, uh, got the uh, permanent health increase, and, uh, still destroyed the boss. Okay, so this is the rock and roller. This is actually, it could be a pretty tough stage. I've actually died here many times. But the trick here is just to kill these guys as quickly as you can. And don't even worry about some of the other mechanics. Just don't get crushed by these guys. And there we go, we did it. So there are up arrows and down arrows. Uh, the up arrows, I believe, speed up the, uh, you know, the conveyor belt. And the down arrows, I think, uh, slow it down. Or maybe it's reverse. It might be, uh, it might be the opposite of that, for all I know. And, uh, no health increases, unfortunately. Not, or not health increases, but health refills. So this is where, uh, some of the, like, the fire extinguisher-looking enemies appear. And they can be a little annoying to deal with. They can be quite aggressive. Uh, they have a tendency of jumping upwards and then just landing right on top of you. Which, uh, again, can be pretty annoying. Especially when you have no health, like I have right now. I have, uh, one block of health and that's it. There we go, we got some health back from that. But, got hit by another enemy. Didn't take damage though, which is good. All right, so with this car, we can blast through the uh, blast through that wall, which is nice. Get ourselves another TV. Now, when you do switch to a different form, you do have to wait for it to uh, basically time out, which is why I just sat there against that wall. 
And then another TP right here, just like so. Kill this guy to the right. And we're not gonna go to the left, there's not really anything over there, as far as I'm aware. Lots of bugs. Again, some of the most annoying enemies in the game. Again, that's a checkpoint right there. He just uh, really slammed me up into the air. That's, uh, or propelled me up into the air. That's odd. Oh yeah, sometimes you have invisible platforms as well. And uh, they sparkle when you're on top of them. I guess we're actually doing pretty well health-wise. We got most of our life back, which is good. So there's a generator, which means there's a satellite uh, somewhere in this level. And uh, I've never actually found the satellite on this level. So maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe it's up here somewhere. It is. Hey, look at that. So we actually just found something new my, in, during the Let's Play. So we actually found our way to uh, the next bonus level. That's pretty cool. Now, unfortunately, we ended up missing power-ups as a result. Because we still had a lot of power-ups to, to discover. Yeah, so for this, you don't even uh, fire with your uh, your main buttons. You just press in the direction that you want to shoot. And uh, this ball here just shoots automatically. One thing I'll do is I will just, uh, just aim, like, left and right. Not left and right, but, like, diagonally. So left down, left down, left down. Not diagonally, but... I don't even know how to explain this. <laughs> too much going on here. Did we do it? Oh, we didn't do it. We didn't get it. So, we had four seconds left and I died. But fortunately, you don't, you, you don't lose an actual life on the bonus stages, but what I do find interesting about the bonus stages is that your health from the previous level is carried over. So, if you go to that bonus stage with only one block of health, then uh, you only get one chance at the bonus stage. So, one hit and uh, it's, it's over with. Health refill. Our times five multipliers disappearing. So is our upgraded shot. Uh, there are also these uh, these capsules here that you can destroy, but they don't seem to really do anything. If anybody knows any de any extra details about those, uh, let me know. I'm kind of curious if uh, there's an Easter egg for maybe destroying all of them or or something like that. So I think there's actually a TV over here as well. Yep, just like that. Times 10 multiplier. And the times 10 is just really good if you're trying to score. Try to get those extra lives. And I think I might have gone the wrong way with the drill. Yeah, I went the wrong way with the drill, unfortunately. Oh well, not a big deal. Not the end of the world. And we're gonna skip a lot of the, uh... Th there was a whole other area with stuff I could get. I'm just gonna go ahead and skip it. It's not a big deal. Uh, there is no permanent health increase in this level. So I am not, uh, not too worried about exploration here. And we got a 2x multiplier. More photons. Sometimes TVs do just drop photons. One up. Very good. We have nine lives. And uh, this should be the boss fight. 
So let's go ahead and sit back. This guy will probably do sort of a, a worm form. Yep. And we want to move to the right and move back to the left, like so. And he's going to do a form where he goes along the ground. We're going to go ahead and just try to hit him like that. Oops. And then he's going to run at you in a humanoid form. Just like so. And then uh, just rinse and repeat. Same thing over and over again. Oh! So we ended up dying. And actually, it looks like I did not get a checkpoint in the level. That was one of the one of the downsides to not exploring those other areas, is I missed a potential checkpoint. So we've got to run through the whole level again. Yeah, and so this is where we would have had the drill, but I went the wrong way when I drilled. And look at that, that's where our checkpoint is. And I just rushed right past that TV, I didn't bother going back and trying to get it. I got some more bugs here. Oh, come on. See, like I said, they can be really cheap. Very nice. I've never actually gotten this room before. Health refill. All right, let's just go this way. You notice that Vector Man can pick up quite quite the momentum uh, when he jumps in the air. All right, boss time again. Let's try this again. We should get it this time. Still took another hit. It's tricky. So just like in a lot of games, I like to taper my shots. Because you can only have so many projectiles on screen at once. Uh, I think the, the limit is three. So... So instead of just trying to have all three shots on screen at once, I just taper my shot constantly, like this. Do a constant stream of, uh, attacks. We're basically doing a constant stream of damage. And we're being- we're just being more effective with our sh making our shots actually connect with the, uh, the enemy. Alright, Day 10, Superstructure. Um, this is where one of the next health increases is. And this is one that, uh, I was not able to get, so we'll- we'll try to see if we can get it on this one. I sort of have an idea on what I'm supposed to do. But I'm not 100% certain yet. We've discovered uh, another thing or two in this playthrough, like the bonus stage. So we'll see if we can discover this too. Assuming these uh, constantly spawning bugs let me. They're kind of like I was talking about earlier. This is one of those levels where, um, you know, the stage theme is basically a palette swap of the stage one uh, theme in the game. And there's going to be another stage later on that is a, a night theme of, well, the same, the same level theme. So, you basically have uh, a level one uh, done three times. You know, obviously the level layout itself is different, but the, uh, you know, the flags, the sky, the, uh, the floor, all that stuff is basically the same. It's just uh, palette swapped. All right, checkpoint. 
Okay, car form. Come in here and just smash through some stuff. You know, I just now realize, I don't know why it took me until now to realize this, but this is actually an auto-fire shot. Um, I'm so used to just mashing the button in this game. Okay, this is actually where I need to go. And I've, I'm pretty sure I've messed it up. Oh, we might have actually gotten it. Yep, that's it. <laughs> so we get it. We got it. That was that was awesome. We did it. Yeah, so that's where one of the other permanent health increases is. You have to take that jet form and fly all the way around. Go through this uh, illusory wall. And there's a satellite here, so we, we could try to get to the, uh, the other bonus stage as well. But we're running out of time, too. Oh, look at that! There's the generator! Man, we're just discovering a whole bunch of stuff in this playthrough. Alright, so let's just come back and... Instead of going to the end of level, we'll just, uh... Destroy this. Alright, bonus stage number three. Rotating the uh, the D-pad, basically. seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. 25,000 points. Very nice. That's a good chunk of points in this game. All right, so day, day 11, staying alive. So for this guy, we just have to shoot through the opening. And uh, I find if you stay vertically, uh, it's the easiest to hit him that way. It just feels like there's the largest gap. Yeah, not a very difficult level, but if you happen to get there with just one block of health or two blocks of health, uh, you might find yourself dying, unfortunately. So. So again, instead of uh, mashing the fire button like I've been doing this whole playthrough, uh, I'm just holding it down now. Which actually makes this weapon even better than I thought it was originally, because it fires faster than uh, than I originally thought it would. So we're about three quarters of the way through the game now. And uh, this level actually isn't all that long either. And we can go ahead and use the grenade right here fall through like this. Oh, another jet. Or, not really jet, but... I don't think I'm supposed to fall down like this. I probably should have gone upwards. Or maybe not. Maybe this is... I don't know. This is, a. Uh, you just tore right through those enemies. So if you're just trying to sort of speed run your way through, then doing that is probably good. Not even speedrun, but just going through the game quickly without collecting everything. Not really speedrunning.
couple TVs up here too. There we go, end of the level. Alright, so this should be on uh, the next level where we can get our uh, next permanent health extend. And I'm pretty sure that's going to be our last permanent health extend for the rest of the playthrough. But if... Yeah, by getting all of them, you over double your, your health bar. So you start with four blocks of health. And then uh, you can extend that by another five, which is really nice. So it definitely makes life a lot easier. You'll notice that I've got nine lives right now. If I didn't have these permanent health extends, I would have less lives right now. Because I just have so much more health uh, to go around now. And let's actually come back this way. Alright, grenade. And I actually... I went the wrong way. Um, yeah, I went the wrong way. Not a big deal. But there's actually a drill you can get as well, which will drill you through the floor. Might be right here. Yep, and we can go this way, drill through that. Alright, so now we're going to come over to the right, and what we're going to look for is a uh, big tower. There's going to be an interesting uh, double jump that we have to do in order to get the power up. It's actually probably one of my, one of my favorite jumps in the game. And we can drill probably, yep, down this way. Okay, so it looks like there's another satellite on this level, too. But that is, uh, second priority. Number one priority is extending that health even further. Checkpoint. So I'm certain that we're going to have to work our way back. It's like that's a secret. Another illusory wall you can jump through. Yep, there's the satellite. Okay, good to know. Run, Vector Man, run! <laughs> I love all of Vector Man's animations in this game. They're very well done. Okay, so that's it right here. So we have to jump over here and then jump up like that. It's very, very tight. And there's our next permanent health refill. So what we're gonna do now is actually... Well, I could just take the top route, try to get some other TVs and whatnot. Because uh, the top route will take us to the, uh, the satellite. Okay. 
And uh, the reason I'm doing this too is we have plenty of time. Normally I'd be low on time and I'd just say, I would say, screw it, who cares? Two multiplier. All right, so I actually probably have to have to go back now. That I think about it. I think I've gone too far. Assuming I can actually go back. Okay. Yeah, we can. Oh, I might be stuck. I might not be able to go back. Hmm. Okay, no. Okay, cool. Yeah, no, we can get it. Awesome. I thought I was uh, blocked off from the satellite. Yeah, there it is. Let's just go ahead and exit. So this love play has actually ended up a little bit different than I anticipated because, um, you know, we ended up finding a bunch of these bonus rounds that I've never found before. So that's pretty cool. It's always fun discovering new things uh, in a let's play. And let's see if we can uh, complete this again. I took two hits! I took two hits. That was a shame. Okay, so this is our, uh, second to last level. Second to last normal level. I don't know if the final boss counts as its own separate stage or not. But we have, uh, two more regular levels. This one, and then the one that comes after it. And then after that, it's just we go straight to the final boss, and then that's it. So what I do sometimes in this level is I just fall down just as quickly as I can. Because by the point in this in the game, I'm usually just kind of worn out by it. You know, I've been playing for so long. Uh, this playthrough has almost been an hour up to this point. With all the stuff that we found. So we can just fall down. Just kind of skip the power-ups. Doesn't even really matter that much. Although there is one uh, hidden extra life uh, at the end of the, of, the of the level, which is actually nice to get. So I'll definitely show you where that is. But we just fall down like so. This down here is actually a dead end. But if you try to collect everything, then you want to know to come down here. So now we work our way back up, but on the other side. Alright, so this is uh, where the secret extra life is. We've got a bunch of invisible platforms that we jump onto. You can see the little photons, they sort of guide you in the right direction. Well, I'm gonna try something here. Okay, it almost looked like I could go through that wall.
Alright, there's one, there's another, and another, and there's our TV. For an extra life. So now we have ten lives. I don't think I've ever had ten lives in this game, let alone nine. We had nine. Alright, so this is a uh, three-phase boss, three-form boss. This guy just goes up and down, or up and down, or up and down. I just run underneath him, like so. And then just shoot him as, uh... As he goes up, like that. As you can see, he can drop some, uh, some missiles, too. Alright, so the next guy coming out is, uh, this sort of... <laughs> ...land-walking fish? I don't know what you would call it. But we're gonna shoot him a little bit, and then try to jump over him like this, and just get past him like so, and just rinse and repeat. But what I make, want to make sure I'm not firing as I'm jumping over him, because what happens is I seem to lose my uh, my momentum, and you need to have momentum, otherwise uh, you'll just land right on top of him, or he'll catch up to you. And I'm also trying to hit him as well by. Uh, Doing my double jump blast like that. You can hear uh, a little slight uh, screeching sound um, indicating that you're actually doing damage. Yeah, there he is. He's dead. All right, third form. So this guy is actually not too bad to deal with. All you have to do is just shoot him when he's on the ceiling. And when he's on the ceiling, he'll always just fall down, like so. What I want to do is get him over to the left. I don't want to shoot him when he's right in front of me. Just like so. Pretty easy as long as you follow the patterns. And then we have one more level. I'm just going to try to rush my way through this stage. Um, it's probably not one of the more interesting levels in the game. You do have to take a lot of lifts, both up and down. Which is, uh, a little, little slow. But let's do it, and then fight the final boss afterwards. Alright, so we just stay on these, and they will take us down below. Just like the lifts uh, earlier in the game that I was talking about. I'm trying to kill these bugs before I jump up and grab that. Alright, so I actually think I want to come over here first. Come up like so. And then just come over this way. Good, checkpoint. I was actually just thinking to myself, I was like, you know what? I probably shouldn't skip too many TVs, because if I do, I'm gonna regret it when, um, I die at a boss or something like that. Or well, not a boss, because there is no boss at the end of this level. It's, uh, one of those levels where it just ends. But I'm gonna regret it if I die and have to go all the way back to the very beginning. Just work our way up like this. And then work our way back down. We're probably going to end up just landing right on top of one of those fire extinguisher looking guys. Again, sort of... <laughs> Solidifying my point earlier about some, some cheap enemy placement. Like, even those bugs, I just landed right on top of them. 
again, it's just it's the sort of thing you just sort of live with, you know? You get plenty of health refill options. It doesn't happen that often. Not often enough, I think, to, to make a, a big deal of, about it. Alright, we're gonna work our way back down again. So it's just up and down, up and down, up and down. There we go. Always get hit by that guy. It seems like to, in order to not get hit by him, you have to uh, sort of walk off the, uh, the platform right as you go uh, beneath uh, one of these wires, one of these, one of these frames, whatever they're called up top. All right, we're almost, there. There is another one, and on this one, we have to actually work our way up. And that's it! So this is gonna take us to our final boss, and the final boss is kind of interesting. Alright, so a bunch of debris actually comes at you, so you just want to shoot it away. Just like so. And we're going to land on these rooftops. And what I like to do is actually just stay on the left-hand side and just attack him like this. As you do damage to him, health pellets start to appear. And uh, he'll start shooting projectiles at you like so. Okay, we got two blocks of health back. Oh, we died. <laughs> it's one of the problems with actually falling off those rooftops like that. Is that, uh, you know, you get bounced back up into the air. You don't take any damage for, for you know, jumping off the, the platforms. But it's hard to see what's above you. And a lot of times what happens is you just slam into a projectile. And that's exactly what happened. So this is actually one of the, the big reasons you want to get your health uh, increases. Because uh, this guy can be a little bit of a pain. He's definitely one of the toughest parts of the game for me. But you definitely want to focus on the platforms down below. You want to try to make sure you stay on top of them. Because that gives you uh, the greatest amount of control over this fight. If you're constantly falling off the platforms, uh, you're gonna you're gonna fall down and it's gonna push you back up and you're gonna slam into projectiles All right, he's actually almost dead now you can Go ahead and get some of that health And there we go. Pretty sloppy, but he's actually a pretty tough final boss for me in terms of uh, doing it without taking too much damage. So, really nice graphical effects on this, this boss fight, though. So, kind of a cool way to end the game. But yeah, that is Vector Man, guys. That is a full playthrough of Vector Man. And look at that, we still ended up with 10 lives, even after dying a couple of times. So, uh, and that took us a little over an hour to go through. And uh, that was without finding all the TVs and, and things like that. We found quite a few, but, you know, so a, a nice full playthrough with getting every item would probably take, I don't know, probably an hour and 20 minutes at least, I would say. So, but yeah, that's the end of Vector Man. So once these credits roll out, what we'll do is we'll start over again and we will uh, try to activate some of these cheat codes and whatnot. Uh, there's some interesting things here that you can do. So the the first thing I want to show you is the uh, the Sega um, 
Like, there's a little mini game you can play on the Sega logo, which is pretty cool. So normally you can you can just jump around and shoot. Uh, there's a TV that you can get, and you can get a grenade that uh, not a grenade, but an item that'll blow up the Sega logo. Uh, but there's actually more you can do on that part, which is really cool. So, and we'll just let all this uh, all this roll out. Yeah, hopefully that, uh, you know, hopefully this playthrough has been helpful to some of you guys out there that uh, have struggled with this game and maybe uh, have thought about giving it another try. So finding those health pickups or permanent health increases is definitely very, very important um, if you want to make this game easier on yourself. So, uh, but it was also really cool that we actually ended up finding uh, some of those bonus stage areas as well, like the uh, satellite generators and satellites. Uh, Quite a few of those I didn't know about. Uh, I mean, I knew they existed, I just didn't know where they were exactly. Because maybe I'd find the generator, but I wouldn't be able to find the satellite. Uh, or vice versa, I wouldn't find the generator. Uh, but could find the satellite, so... But, uh, yeah, it's just going through all the bosses and whatnot here. It's a monkey. A lot of the bosses in this game are fairly creative. Uh, you know, they're not really all that complex to fight, but... Um, you know, they are varied. I can definitely give the game that. Uh, definitely for sure, so... <laughs> and there's the, the uh, development team. And there we go. And you can actually, it seems like you can play some samples too. <laughs> Let's go ahead and hit start. So, 695,000 points. Uh, Alright, so what we're going to do here is on the Sega logo, we are going to... Uh, there we go. We're going to shoot the Sega logo 24 times. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then jump up and hit it 12 times. Okay, it looks like we actually failed. Let's try this again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 12, 13, 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12. Oh, it's not working. Okay, so what we're, we're going to end up having to do is uh, just let this loop over and over again. And we'll just skip through that. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and just let this play out. Uh, actually, you know what I'll do is uh, I will try... And we'll try something else here. So, there's actually a, a couple of things you can do here. So, we'll go ahead and just jump right into the game. Um, okay, there we go. So, what we'll do is we'll hit start. A lot of this stuff requires you to pause. If you press B, A, left, down... It shows your... Uh, displays one digit X, Y, X and Y coordinates of the player and screen. So it tells you where you are, uh, just the coordinates on where you are uh, on the screen, which is kind of interesting. Uh, let's see, so A left, A, B, A, mode A. And uh, it looks like that shows... What does that show? Displays a four-digit counter, enemy-related. Interesting. So the bottom right hand portion of the screen looks like that's just related to some enemy AI. Um, a left, A, B, A. Oh no, that's the one I already did. Let's go ahead and start. So it's B, A, left, left. And then that changes our uh, coordinates. Four digit X, Y coordinates of the player. So this is just like debug stuff for uh, developing purposes. If you do A, B, uh, sorry. A, B, right, A, C, A, down, A, B, right, A. You get all your health back. So we just got all of our health back. Um, you go left, left, A, mode, A. It takes you back to your options menu. And that takes us all the way back to the title screen.
Okay, so let's go ahead and get back into the game, try that again. So if you do CA left left ACAB, you are uh, invincible. Invisibility and invincibility. Did I just. Um, I, <laughs> I don't even know what I just did. I did the right code, right? I'm an arrow on the screen. And it doesn't seem to really do anything. Oh! Interesting. So, that's actually kind of crazy. So the arrow is kind of me being invincible and just constantly doing damage to enemies that it touches. So we just swipe them like that. That is, that's pretty wild. Let's actually skip to the boss fight. I'm kind of curious what happens there. Um, okay, there it is. Let's see if we do damage to him. Open up. Oh, it's not doing damage to it. Okay, so there's actually nothing we can do there. That's interesting. Uh, let's try that again. So C A left left A C A B, and now we're back to normal vector man. Very interesting. So down right A C up left A is apparently slow motion. seem like it's slow. Let's try that again. Down, right, A, C, up, left, A. I heard a sound effect for it. Yeah, it looks like it's a little bit slower. Down, right, A, C, up, left, A. Down, right, A, C, up, left, A. Yeah, it doesn't really seem that much slower. A little bit, I mean, a little bit. Let's do A, B, A, C, A, B. Oh, now it's slow motion. Okay, now it's working. That is definitely slow motion. <laughs> Maybe it's uh, actually slowing down because of uh, of the light bulb trick. Let's try that again. So A B A C A B. So I don't know what the light bulbs do. Yeah, so it seems like the slowdown is intentional. It's only uh, a slow mode when you get hit, apparently. So that's that's actually kind of cool too. Okay, so unknown. It says, actually, go ahead and kill me. All right. All right. So unknown is C A left left A B A down B A B Y down up mode. B. And it says unknown. No clue. Um, okay, so one of the other ones I want to do is R A down A R. Yeah, it doesn't do it. It doesn't work. So apparently there's one um, where it displays the hitboxes. Maybe that's what the light bulbs are. Like, it's showing my hitbox, but it's not showing the hitbox for the enemies. I, so there's it, there's one that says, um, it says display hitbox corners. Oh, there it is. Wait, what? His hitboxes aren't that large. Let's try that again. So, RA down A right. No, it didn't work. RA down A right. There we go. Okay, yeah, so it does show the hitboxes. But it seems like it's temporary. So you have to do the code over and over again to see the hitboxes. Okay, <laughs> look at the slowdown from that code. Okay, RA down... A right. Yeah, it's okay. That's really interesting. I 
Okay guys, so let's try this one again. This is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There we go. So now we have to collect Sega letters. And if we get over 90, we skip to stage 5. And if we get over 110, we skip to stage 10. Oh, it doesn't look like we're going to actually get it successfully. <laughs> this is a really fun one, by the way. This one just really caught me off guard uh, earlier today. Oh, we only got 86. So, you have to get, uh, you have to get 90. And, uh, you have to get 90 to skip the stage 5, apparently. And if you get over 110, you'll skip the stage 10. So... So yeah, that is Vector Man, guys. That's gonna do it for this Let's Play. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, some fun little things we were able to show off there at the end. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, as always, just uh, post a comment down below. Uh, if you're new to my channel, consider subscribing. I've got a lot of Let's Plays on here. Many, many more to come. Most being much more concise and shorter than this one. This was actually uh, one of the longer Let's Plays I've done in a while. Um, but yeah, still hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if everyone already subbed to my channel, uh, thanks for your continued support. Hope you guys continue to enjoy getting these Let's Plays. Um, if you guys liked the video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. It helps me out. Or give it a thumbs down if you hated it. And uh, until the next one, guys, take it easy.